Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to continue our adventures with Heroes of the Pacific from Lock and Load's tactical combat system. When we last left off, the U.S. forces were poised to start their assault on the Japanese village and to the east, Japanese reinforcements were trying to push through a light line of U.S. defense. We'll start out with a couple of looks at some errors that we made in the previous episode and then we'll jump right into the action. So our first error to correct is uh, regarding jungle hexes. Actually, everything we're going to talk about pretty much is jungle hexes in this uh, video. The, Michael Panikowski pointed out that the stacking limit and the damage limits for jungle hexes are different for U.S. and Japanese forces in the game. Now, I knew about the moving stacking limit. I actually talk about it in the previous video. And yet still, somewhere in this video, I moved a squad in from the east, so I put three U.S. squads in this jungle hex here, which is a clear mistake. The easiest way to fix that is I'm going to move this squad, assume it went from, I think it was here anyway, back into this hex here where there's another U.S. squad with the Browning automatic rifle. That'll give us two U.S. squads in each of these jungle hexes and adhere to the stacking limit. So it's an easy way to correct that error. The second error that I didn't know about that Michael Panikowski also pointed out is that not only are the stacking limits uh, different for U.S. forces when they're in a jungle hex, the defense bonus is different. So it is a plus three for Japanese forces when they're in jungle hexes. It's plus two for U.S. forces when they're in jungle hexes instead of plus three. Now I calculated there were some Japanese forces. There were a number of times where Japanese forces fired on U.S. forces in the jungles. I didn't check them all because I don't want to kind of undo a bunch of stuff. But I did check this biggest one here, which was the Lieutenant Kusanagi and his machine gun squad opened up on Corporal Migliori. It turns out that it, did, it wouldn't have changed the outcome of this combat result. So from that regards, there was, it didn't impact the gameplay. But going forward, I do want to make sure that I calculate it correctly. So the U.S. only get a plus two defensive bonus, whereas the Japanese get a much better plus three defensive bonus when their units are positioned in heavy jungle. And with that, it's time to resume the action. In the, we're going to go to turn five of nine in this scenario. The U.S. forces have two squad, two groups of forces, really, basically set to attack the Japanese village, although one squad up here in this jungle hex was shaken in the previous turn. Uh, to get ready for this upcoming turn, I'm going to clear off all the fired markers, and then we're going to try to rally this U.S. force up here, but that'll come up momentarily. So we should see the firefight for this village take place in these next couple of turns here. Over to the east... We have Japanese forces pushing from the kind of the south here up. We've set up these U.S. forces to try to defend against them. We have about 60 men in here, so we've got about 50 men. So we've got a good defensive line for the U.S. here. But the Japanese have uh, banzai ability. So I probably will try to trigger that and see if they can rush across and take out some U.S. forces. Battle and fighting should erupt here as well. It should be lots of action in this episode. Could be a critical time in this scenario. Let's jump right in and resume where we left off. Let's roll for initiative to get started. Japanese get a three, the US get a two. The Japanese can go first and perform their rally phase, but they don't have any shaken units as their Japanese infantry don't get shaken. We don't really need to reposition or reassemble any uh, machine guns that could be kind of assembled or anything like that. And there's no real uh, support weapons to exchange. So all of those things that would apply in the rally phase, the Japanese aren't going to do. So we go to the U.S. in their rally phase. Unlike the Japanese, the U.S. do have at least one thing to do. The first thing we want to try to do is to rally this shaken U.S. squad in here. Uh, Corporal Migliori can add his leadership modifier uh, to it, so well, subtract it, so it's minus one on the die roll. Their morale is a five. We're rolling 2d6. We need a five or less. Minus one for the leadership modifier of Migliori, but also minus two because they're in a defensive hex that provides them with cover. So jungle hexes have a positive defensive modifier, so we are subtracting three, meaning we need an eight or great, an eight or less for this unit to rally. Oh, they get snake eyes. No problem rallying. So this squad is back in action and that will actually probably dictate our second action here. That was pretty good because this machine gun was dismantled so they can get back in action and they are going to set up this machine gun so they can start opening fire with it. 
And that's it for these squares here, for this X here. And I think that's pretty much everything for the US squads. There's no other support weapons that need to be exchanged or anything. I think we are ready to go. Fortunate for the US to get that squad back in action because now they can set up that machine gun and add some firepower on this Japanese hex here. But the Japanese do have the initiative and they will get to make the first action. For the Japanese first action, we're gonna have Lieutenant Kusanagi try to do some damage again here on Corporal Migliori's squad in the woods. Now, I'm pretty sure I did that correctly in the last uh, episode where I had Lieutenant Kusanagi um, spot and then guide the fire here for the machine gun unit here. But we're gonna try it a little bit differently. This time, Lieutenant Kusanagi is going to spot and try to guide the fire, indirect fire, for the mortar. So to spot, uh, Lieutenant Kusanagi needs a one to two, but we subtract his leadership modifier, which means we need a one to three we get a one perfect eagle eye spotting so this hex has been spotted and the Japanese can now fire with the mortar all right and it, just to kind of call this clear just as part of this activity lieutenant Kusanagi is going to activate everybody here he's going to guide the mortar fire this way and then this squad is going to open up with the machine gun after that without his leadership modifier. So to, fall, to fire the mortar bonus, to fire the mortar, we're gonna, we can't use the squad's firepower because it's indirect fire. No degrading terrain or anything in the way counts. It's got an attack factor of two. We do not add the leadership bonus on it. So it's a plus two attack and this is plus two terrain, but a plus two attack first. And with a mortar, we roll two dice and take the highest one. So we get a four and a three. Four plus two is a six. So we've got a six to handle for the mortar attack on Corporal Migliore's hex. Now in this hex, their defense is a regular terrain modifier is plus two, and that's the only modifier they have because the jungle hex is plus two for US forces. They get a five, plus two is a seven. Very good defense, and the mortar attack is ineffective for the Japanese here. However, because he can activate all the units in this hex and the adjacent hex too, Lieutenant Kusanagi can also have this squad fire. Now he can't give his leadership modifier to them, but this squad has their deadly machine gun here, which is the Type 92. So we have four attack factors attacking this hex. Leadership modifier cannot be added to it. It's a straight attack across this hex side, so nothing blocking it. So it's just at this die plus four. Two plus four is a six. Not a great shot by the Japanese here. Again, Corporal Migliori, this time in the hex here, adding two to the defensive bonus. They get a three plus two is a five. So Corporal Migliori's team will have to undergo a damage check at plus one. So let's roll for Corporal Migliori first. His is, he needs a, it's one die plus one. Five plus one is a six, just hangs on. His morale is a six, which is good because we can now add this to the defensive bonus here of the squad here. We get die roll for the first one there. Three plus one is four. They pass their morale check and one plus one is two, which is good. And this is a one, which means we roll for a hero bonus chance. We could generate a hero in this squad. Hex, when you roll for a one on a, de on a damage check, you roll again. If the die is even, you spawn a hero. Odd, no heroes for the US. So now we go to the US impulse and I think it's time for Corporal Migliori. They were very fortunate to survive both the mortar attack and the machine gun attack. Corporal Migliori orders his men because we have up here, in addition to this machine gun, this US squad also has a rather potent satchel charge which has an attack factor of six, can be used in close combat. So Corporal Migliori order, orders his men to charge. They scrubs through the, uh, the kanai grass here and then come pounding into this jungle and engage in close to combat here with the Japanese forces. So we are gonna go directly now to melee. The US will attack first here and we're going to have everybody, there's only one Japanese squad here. So let's just kind of calculate the US attack here, which is we have two squads, one of which is holding the satchel charge and has to use it in this melee round. But we have three firepower factors up here with the machine gun, one with the squad, plus one with the squad, and six with the satchel charge for a total of 10. They're going to attack the Japanese squad that's here, which has a firepower of one, and it can apply its machine gun, which is four. 10 to four is rounded up to three to one on the attack roll. 
3 to 1 on the attack roll means the U.S. needs a 5 or greater to wipe out the Japanese squad and their leader, Lieutenant Kusanagi. They also add Corporal Miglione's uh, kind of leadership bonus here, so they need a 4 or greater to wipe them out. They get an 8. All of the Japanese units are eliminated. However, the Japanese units get a chance to attack before they, because combat is considered simultaneous. So we're going to have the four squad here. They're not going to have a chance, I think, if they win against uh, four against ten would mean a, a, an incredible die roll. But they can go against this one here. Four against the squad with the machine gun, four against three, which gives them significantly better odds. Because odds are rounded up, four against three uh, gives us a three to two odds, meaning the Japanese need a seven or greater. They can also add Lieutenant Kusanagi's leadership here, a six or greater. They get a six, just enough to get a seven, which is what they needed to wipe out the American squad. So a bloody exchange here in this jungle hedge just to the east of the village. But the U.S. come up with, lose 10 men and their machine gun stays here. And go. The satchel charge is displaced, and it's only it's a one-use type of weapon. Japanese squad and the leader are eliminated, leaving Corporal Migliore, ten men, and control now of two machine guns. This one actually is the one that was sitting beside them, so they don't have it with them, but they'll be able to grab it next round. This hex is still tagged with melee. Bloody action in the village. Now we go to the Japanese phase. Let's see what they will do. We're gonna to shift to the east and have Sergeant Hero try to initiate a bonsai attack against this US squad in the jungle with their Browning automatic rifle. Now he can't, I, ideally I might like to go up here, but he can't see them because the line of sight is blocked. So he needs to spot them first. He needs a one or two, but he adds his leadership modifier, a one, two, or three to spot the US squad. A four, they're unspotted. God, it's frustrating for Sergeant Hiro. His eyes are not working very well. And that ends, well, can we do something? They can activate these units, but they have nothing to fire at yet. So, and that's not their phase. So that was just a spotting move. We can do something else with the Japanese now. I don't think it makes sense for the Japanese really to do anything else over here because they can not They can only make one spotting attempt per impulse. The other op option would be to start to charge to kind of initiate melee here, but that bonsai attack is so much more powerful. And I think if they just charge across into the open, they're going to get cut down by this firepower. So I think it makes sense to pass on this side. But let's take a look at the village. Now, the, the question we have in the village here, everything's either dead or activated up here. This unit here, I was thinking we could try to have them charge and catch this unit in melee before they were able to pick up all of these units, but they can't make it there because this is two, four, five, six, and they only have four movement points because they don't have a leader with them. So they can't get up there in time for the U.S. squad to kind of gather up these melee weapons and become kind of a formidable force here. The other option would be to try to shoot here and spot at this unit in the wood, in the jungle, but if they don't, well, they can't spot actually because we've already spotted, tried to spot on an impulse. So they could charge these units, but they'll get cut down. I think it's, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We're gonna have the Japanese units pass. I don't see any good options for them. I think things are turning against them here quickly. Let's go now to the U.S. Uh, impulse, and we're going to start to attack this uh, lone squad here in these huts off to the side. I mean, the Japanese still have the mortar squad up here, the mortar, uh, they have a squad of troops, the mortar, they have uh, two squads here. So there's still work to be done for the U.S., but what we're going to have is... Uh, we're going to have one squad with the squad without the flamethrower advance up here into this light jungle. And no, they're not going to low crawl. The idea is to come full speed and see if we can kind of keep going and engage in melee here. The Japanese squad is going to opportunity fire. I think uh, it doesn't make sense to let the U.S. squad come in and melee. Maybe it does. But then this squad with the flamethrower is going to come in and it's going to be all over. They're going to do that anyway. I, I think it makes sense to try to take them out here with direct fire rather than in melee. So the Japanese squad is going to opportunity fire on the U.S. squad, advancing through the light jungle into the huts here. This will be a good shot for the Japanese squad, though. They have their firepower of one. It is firing at a unit that's moving, so we're going to get plus uh, two. So it's fire, the die roll plus one for their inherent firepower, plus another one, so plus two because this unit is moving, and then plus two more because the unit is adjacent. So it's the die roll plus four. This is, could be murderous fire here on the, by the Japanese. Three plus four is a seven for the Japanese here. So 
that's a pretty strong attack factor. The U.S. squad here has an inherent defense of just itself, but it's in light jungle, which gives us a plus one, so this is bad news. Brave U.S. soldiers trying to provide distracting fire here. Oh, the heroes, they make it six. Um, plus one is a seven. They survive that fire attack. It's equal. It has to be greater than to break it. So the U.S. get a seven on the defense, which equals the attack that's ineffective. The question is now, what do we want to have the U.S. do? Do they want to continue on? This unit has fired. I don't think we do, because I think we want to have this squad go right in and try to do melee right away because, or just open up fire, because the range is two, and they have an attack factor of four with this flamethrower. So maybe we just wanna, now that they're spotted and stuff like that, yeah, we're gonna just have them, sp we're gonna try to save lives and be a little bit less bold. We're gonna mark this squad with moved, we're gonna end the US impulse, and now it goes to the Japanese impulse. There really isn't much for the Japanese to do. I don't wanna move those units in the jungle. We wanna try to see if we can instigate a melee. Time is running out, but we still have four turns left for those units on the east side to do something. So I think it's going to make sense for the Japanese to pass. The US now comes here. We're going to have Snake open up and guide this squad to fire its flamethrower right on this house here on the huts, the Japanese squad that's in there. So let's figure out this attack. It's the attack factor of one plus the flamethrower, which is four gives us an attack factor of five. No leadership modifiers or anything like that. The target unit hasn't moved or anything, so it's just a straight up attack factor of five. However, they are firing between two degrading hexes along a hex side there, which means that we do consider the degrading hex there. So that means it's a minus one to it. So we get five minus one is plus four to the die roll. All right, straight up attack. The flamethrower and the squad open fire. Five plus four is a nine. That's a pretty brutal attack. This flamethrower pouring it on. Japanese units defending in the village here. This is a plus one terrain modifier for the bamboo hut. That's it? Nothing else for the Japanese? Oh dear, this is gonna be, this could be ugly here. Four plus one is a five on a defense. Nine to five is a plus four four damage check modifier. So the Japanese unit here will ray roll for a plus four to see if they survive and see how this goes. We get a one. Now Japanese units do not generate heroes. One plus four is five, which is equal to the morale, which means that it has no effect on the Japanese unit. Oh, that was, that's, well, I mean, it's still gonna be quite, it's gonna be interesting next turn, right? Because a lot of stuff is going on, but these units have fired. We do have someone adjacent, so they'll be able to spot them and repeat that firing, perhaps. But the Japanese lived to fight another day. I thought we could take that squad out as the US. Japanese hanging on here. It's looking a little grim, though. Now we go to the Japanese impulse. They will pass. The question is, do we want to do something as the US back over here on the east? You know, I think time is to our advantage over here. I don't want to move out of these positions because that will, well, actually, these units can't fire because they, well, they have a range of two, range of three. I'm trying to think, could we, should we shuffle over one squad up here? One, two, three, they would be in the open there. And then they could fire at them at a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. Sure, they could fire. And that would probably make sense to catch the squad in the open. And they have a Browning Automatic already. I mean, if the Banzai attack comes off, it's going to get crazy over here. We're just hoping that it doesn't... I mean, every turn it doesn't happen benefits the U.S. And so I think we're going to have the U.S. pass as well. The Japanese will pass. That ends turn five. Before we go to turn six, I made a mistake. The U.S. forces couldn't carry this machine gun when it's assembled. They can only carry it when it's disassembled. So they couldn't have taken it from back here up into the melee hex and used it in melee. I think the easiest way to fix that is just to say that they abandoned it back in that jungle hex. Probably had I realized that I might have done something a little bit different, but it didn't impact either outcome, either melee outcome in this hex. The Japanese forces would have still been destroyed given the odds in the die roll. Likewise, that American squad would have been destroyed given the die roll that the Japanese had. So uh, I think that's the easiest way to clean it up, but you can only take these when they are, you can only carry them around when they're disassembled. I just forgot. So we're going to turn six. Let's roll for initiative, see who gets 
That U.S. gets a four to one initiative. That's huge, I think, for this time. So because that'll give them a chance to fire first on some of these places in the jungle. So let's go check out what the U.S. may want to do with the initiative here in terms of uh, other options. Okay, so in the aftermath of this melee, we're going to have this squad here. This is the only action that the U.S. will do. There's no broken squads or shaken squads and things like that. We're going to have this squad pick up the Japanese uh, machine gun, the M Type 92 machine gun, and take care and use that. Now, they can use it, and you can use a captured support weapon until you make a fire attack that does not cause a damage check, at which time you can't use in the, that machine gun anymore, and it's removed from play, I believe. Um, but that's the only action for the U.S. in the support phase. Likewise, the Japanese have no actions to make, no shaken units, no exchanges of weapons or anything like that, so we can go right into the U.S. turn of part to part of turn six, and we will get to see what the U.S. will do first. So there's a couple of dangerous spots here for the U.S. and Japanese forces. These adjacent place with these Japanese units in the hut here and the U.S. forces moving through the light jungle, the mortar team up here adjacent to Corporal Miglior in, in this jungle hex here. Um, and I think this is seems to me if they open fire here, they can do a lot more damage here, and this could be kind of catastrophic. So we're going to have Corporal Miglior go first and he's going to fire on this squad and the US squad kind of runs over, grabs the captured Japanese Type 20 92 machine gun and opens fire with it. So let's calculate this one. So defensively, this is just light jungle here, which doesn't provide a lot of cover for the Japanese. US forces have an attack strength of firepower of one with the squad. They can add the Japanese machine gun, which is a three to it as well. And they get an additional bonus because they're firing adjacent. So it's a firepower of four plus two is six. And they also add the leadership modifier of Corporal Migliori here, which is seven. This is a potentially nasty shot, a lot of firepower. So the US squad, half of them, half of one squad completely wiped out. They wiped out one Japanese squad, rushing over, grabbing the machine gun, and opening fire on the Japanese mortar squad. Plus seven attack here. Four plus seven is 11. That's a pretty nasty attack here. So 11 attack power. Japanese defense here is just light jungle, which is a mere plus one. Oh, this could be nasty. Japanese mortar team scurrying for cover. Oh, they get one plus one, which is a two. 11 to two is a plus nine defensive check for the Japanese. So we will roll this and add nine to it and compare it to the unit's morale. This is a brutal attack. Three plus nine is 12. If we look at the damage chart here, so 12 is two to less, uh, less than three times the morale, but more than twice the morale, which is a two-step reduction. So we flip them over to get the one-step reduction, which reduces them to this one, three, four, and then we change them back out to their two-step reduction unit, which is a one, two, four. Still a potential, I mean, the firepower there, interestingly enough for the Japanese, doesn't change, but they have uh, they've had some pretty significant casualties here. Now we go to the Japanese activation. Japanese squad down here in these huts is gonna open fire on the US squad just to their south in this light jungle. This could be a pretty deadly attack here, except they don't have a heck of a lot of firepower. Uh, attack firepower is one. They're adjacent, which gives them plus two more, which gives them plus three. So it's one die roll plus three. Japanese open fire. Oh, that's really bad shooting. One plus three is four. Not a good shot by the Japanese. US forces are in the open. So it's just a plus one modifier for the US forces, nothing else. They have to get a four or um, greater. Five plus one is six. Six is greater than four. The Japanese attack by rolling that one gets no effect. That is rather disastrous for the Japanese here. Rather than screw around this time, we're going straight in. So Snake orders his squad with the flamethrower to advance through the light jungle and crash into the area here with the huts. He goes with them and it's time for melee. Let's figure out the odds for the US attack. There's no combat modifier for Snake here, but the firepower of the squad is one. The flamethrower makes it a nasty five. Five to one, it, five against one is five to one odds for the US here. So they need on their kill number here for melee, five to one's odd. They need a three or greater to be able to hit here. This should be 11. Oh, so they wipe out this squad. The Japanese squad, however, 
gets a chance to you know attack is simultaneous so they're going to get an attack back against the u.s forces it is one against five which is resolved at one against three which is the worst odds japanese need an 11 or greater to wipe the u.s out Ooh, they came close they get a nine but to no avail that squad is eliminated and the u.s forces now have taken control of one of the village hex objectives this is still tagged with melee and snake has successfully led his force in here good job snake we're gonna have this Japanese squad that was controlling the mortar try to get some return, some fire here. I think that's their best odds. I don't think melee would work very well for them. They don't have a leader, so they can't order a bonsai attack either. So it is one firing here and an adjacent hex and a jungle hex for the US, but it's adjacent. So it's one plus two gives them a plus three to their attack. The mortar team seeing their compatriots cut down, returns fire. Oh, that's pretty good. Five plus three is an eight on the US forces. So a six, we'll just drop a six plus two here to indicate that. So a firepower of eight. Corporal Migliori's squad here, manning the Type 92 machine gun. They are in the jungle hex, which gives US forces a plus two. And that's it for them. So one die plus two, they have to get an eight. Two plus two is a four. This is a pretty deadly return fire for this Japanese squad. So it's a plus four damage check for the US here which means they have to roll their morale or less on a plus, adding plus four to it. We can, you know, the leader goes first. Let's see what we can do. Two plus four is six. Corporal Migliore holds and doesn't break. Let's see if the squad can do the same. Now this is a plus four, but we can add Corporal Migliore's leadership modifier. We subtract it from this. So it is a plus three attack. See if the squad holds. Five plus three is eight. They do not, and it is less than two times their morale, but greater than their morale, so they go to shaken status. So this changes things up here a little bit. They don't recover. The Japanese squad can come right up here in the next turn, wipe out this squad in melee, capture the machine gun, and control this half of the village again. So the Japanese not out of the picture yet in this village. It's still hanging on a wire. Let's go to the US activation now. Everything, let's see what we've got down here. We have a unit for the US. So this squad here hasn't done anything yet. We're gonna push them forward. Uh, two into the huts and four right here into this hut and they have moved. So that will give us a little bit more support up here. This obviously, this Japanese, the remnants of this Japanese mortar team is the biggest threat that we have yet for the US up in here. And they could still change things a little bit, especially with the, the cracking under fire of Corporal Migliori's squad. They've suffered some heavy casualties in here, pushing through the north part of the village. Now we go to the Japanese activation. Everything up here in this half of the battlefield is done. Let's take a look at the other half. I'm going to try a different strategy down here for the Japanese. Rather than having the leader here, Sergeant Hiro, try to spot this unit over here, we're going to have this squad try to spot them first. So they need to roll uh, a one to two to try to spot this squad over here. And that would, because if they can do that, then next turn, next impulse, Sergeant Hiro can order a bonsai attack because they will have spotted them. So the Japanese squad looks into the jungle. They've had a tough time picking out the US forces across this clearing. A one or a two will spot them. They get a two, spotted. This makes this side of the battlefield much more interesting now. Here come the Japanese. Now they still have their activation and I believe they can do, because this unit here now is ops, uh, where is it, ops complete, they cannot participate in the bonsai attack. I believe they can't, but that's not their impulse. So Sergeant Hiro, can order a bonsai attack as part of his uh, operation right now. And that means that all eligible units, so Sergeant Hiro and the two squads here get tagged with bonsai. We'll just put it to the side. And the other squad that can bonsai is up here. This squad right here can still bonsai. They all activate in bonsai. And the way this works is they are going to move six movement points directly towards the unit that they've spotted and or, um, uh, ordered the bonsai attack for. Sergeant Hiro is going to go first. He scrambles out of the jungle. Bonsai comes the cries across the jungle landscape here. And the question is, what US units do we want to have open fire with opportunity fire? 
And I think what we're going to do is to have these units right here take a shot right away. Now, there are some special regulations with bonsai attacks in terms of defensive modifiers and things like that. Okay, the, the modifiers are that no terrain modifiers are applied to the attacks on the units, but this is a zero anyway, and there's also no penalty for movement for the Japanese either, so um, nothing, it's basically a straight up attack here. So the US force with the plus two firepower opens fire on Sergeant Kiro as he leads his forces across. Three plus two is a five. Not the greatest shot there, but could be okay. Japanese have absolutely no uh, defensive value here. It's nothing, so they just have to beat that five here in terms of the attack. So, because uh, there's n nothing that applies to them defensively. So they get a three. So we get a three, five against three is higher than that. So it's going to be a plus two defensive uh, damage check here for Sergeant Hiro. Now, let's see what happens here with this, a plus two. He should pass this. One plus two is three, that's no problem. Let's see if the squads underneath them pass it. Their morale is five. We can add in Sergeant Hiro's leadership modifier. So instead of a plus two check, it's a plus one check. One plus one is two, they pass. Let's roll for the last squad. One plus one is two, oh, these are just tightly wound up Japanese forces here. They are not even slowing down at all. So the Banzai attack works. This unit so far has worked. These two units have fired. Japanese forces don't have to stop for opportunity fire either. This is their second movement point. And I think this squad, so we can fire from here, I believe with, let's see if it's blocked. That line of sight might be blocked here. Let's check it. Because I would love to get as much firepower. We have to try to get rid of that warrior spirit one here. So the middle of the hex is there. No, that definitely is blocked, isn't it? By that jungle hex there. So yeah, these units can't fire yet. When they get here, they could fire on the Japanese units. So the question is, do we want to have these units open fire right now at one plus one is two. So we get three shots at the Japanese because we can only shoot as many movement points, uh, opportunity shots, as many movement points as they've taken. So we can't have both of these units opportunity fire on these units in this hex. We'd have to have one of them now. I think it's best to take as many shots as we possibly can at these units, or do we want to wait for one plus four attack when they're adjacent? No, we're going to take it. So they're going to fire here. <clears throat> this is going to be another plus two attack on Sergeant Hiro. So US forces open fire, plus two. Oh, that's a good shot. Six plus two is an eight for the US. They are pouring it on now as they see the Banzai getting closer to them. Japanese defensive roll needs to beat an eight and they have no modifiers. So it will result in a damage check. Five, not bad though for the Japanese. Eight to five is a plus three damage check. So let's see what happens with Sergeant Hiro here. Plus three, four plus three is seven. He passes. Now, because of that, we have the five units underneath. We have two of them to check, right? Because there's two five units. Oh, this one's a seven. Okay, it wouldn't have broken anyway. But this one is a five. Let's check this one first. So plus three, but we uh, can add his leadership modifier in here. So plus two. Two plus two is four. He hangs on. Now we go to the plus seven. That's gonna work, right? Oh no! Six plus two is eight, which is one greater than the morale here. So this unit would suffer casualties. And now the question is, do we want to use Sergeant Hiro's warrior spirit or do we want to let this squad get wiped out? Now we have these other units coming and they're going to add to it too. We're not going to use the warrior spirit. We're going to drive on because I think they're going to take another round of fire here. I want to save it for that. So we're going to let that squad. So some Japanese soldiers are cut down and they are taken out of the battle. Japanese Banzai attack does not have to stop for opportunity fire. These units now have fired. Let's go to them as they are getting closer to the American forces, a slightly whittled down Banzai attack here. These units now can open fire because they have perfect line of fire right along that hex side. And we have two squads and a Browning automatic rifle up here. So plus three attack for the US. That Browning has a range of six, yeah. So plus three attack for the U.S. here. This could provide a chance for the U.S. to kind of expend for the Jap for Sergeant here to use his warrior spirit. Plus five, 
four plus, four plus, wait a second, plus three, right? So one, two, three, plus three attack. Uh, four plus three is a seven for the US. So that's a pretty effective shot. Let's see what happens with Sergeant Damage check here. Nothing going on. Oh, a two. That's a devastating roll for the Japanese. A plus five attack now on a morale check on Sergeant Hiro here. So let's see what we can do. Plus five morale check. Two plus five is seven. He passes. Sergeant Hiro is an absolute, just a, a demon here. He's just slowing down for nothing. Now he can apply his uh, bonus to the squad. So plus five, so the squad gets four plus five is nine, minus one is eight. So this would be casualties here. And let's think about what we want to do. As, as much as I would think it would somewhat make sense to use this up, but it's still going to have the same attack power in combat. So we're just going to save the warrior spirit one. You can't use it in melee, so this squad gets whittled down a little bit, but their morale goes up. And Sergeant Hero with his last movement point crashes into this jungle hex and the Banzai attack will start shortly. So this is going to be Banzai and melee. However, can we remove that fired marker? Before that happens, this squad also moves and all the US forces have fired, which means it's going to be pretty grim here for the US force, for the US forces. One, two, three, four, they crash into the hex too which means that now we go to the Banzai attack. The Japanese will attack first here and they have two squads and the Banzai rules adds one to the firepower on attacking only for the units. So two plus two is four. They will attack the only US squad here, which is the Browning automatic rifle and the US squad that's here. Four against two is a two to one melee and they can add Sergeant Hiro's uh, leadership modifier to it. So a two to one melee needs, they need a six or greater to eliminate the US squad on two dice, but we're adding one to it. They need a five or greater. Their Banzai attack has been ferocious. They've suffered some casualties on the way. They reach the US squad. The jungle erupts in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Five plus one is a six. They just got it. So the US forces are wiped out here. However, they do get a chance to attack. Now, the question is, what do we want to do? As the US, this is, would be our odds. We can have go two against both squads, which would be two against two, which is a one-to-one -one attack, which means we would need an eight on a melee attack to wipe out those both Japanese squads. If we attacked one squad, it would be two against one, and we would need a six to wipe out one squad. We're gonna be bold here. The US are gonna try to take out all of the Japanese. So they need, it's one to one, they need a, an eight or great, an eight or greater. Oh, that's right, not an eight or less. No, we're gonna change that. We're gonna have the Browning Automatic and the, the squad attack one of these Japanese squads. They're both the same strength. So we'll just have them attack one squad. So it is a two to one, which means we need a six or greater for the US. Oh, they get a five, but they fail. So the US squad and the Browning is left behind. The US squad is wiped out. The plot changes over here to the other side now, and that's gone. This is now tagged as, oops, that was a half strength squad, or one third of the way down. This is now tagged here as that. We have a melee unit here, melee tag here. Japanese forces will be able to grab the Browning automatic rifle. Gah! And proceed perhaps towards the village. This is getting interesting now. Or do they melee again? I don't know. I think they got to get to the village as quickly as they can. With that, it's the US impulse now, but they don't have anything to do. Then we go to the Japanese impulse, and they don't have anything to do. And that ends turn six. And with that, we will end this episode. So in the east here, Sergeant Hiro leads a ferocious bonsai attack to wipe out a US squad, capture a Browning automatic rifle. I think in the next phase of the battle, they should probably head for the village because the village is the victory objective. Try to lead these US forces to chase and catch up. We still have one straggling Japanese half squad, a few Japanese stragglers down here in the jungle as well. We do have a good bit of firepower for the US, but the question is, how are they going to be able to hold up these Japanese units? And Sergeant Hiro still has his warrior spirit 
um, uh, ability there that can negate one direct fire attack. So potentially very deadly unit still on the move for the Japanese. Back in the town, likewise, things are a little bit delicate here. This U.S. squad has to rally. If they don't and the Japanese go first, this squad could kind of come in here, instigate melee against defenseless units. A leader can't fight and shaken units can't fight. They could wipe them out, recapture the machine gun, and turn the tables on the U.S. forces here. So the village is by far from resolved here. Yeah, lots of things going on for sure. We'll be back in uh, for episode four, and we will finish. We have three turns left. We will finish the scenario in the next episode. So we'll drive on for one longer episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll put a link to the next episode as soon as it's ready. Let me know if you see any mistakes, errors, or have any questions whatsoever. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.